Hello, welcome back. Yes, today we're making a character and we're going all Western. Oh, I don't know, if you've, what did you call this Western? We're making a martial character using Ultra Modern 5. For those of you who are aware of what Ultra Modern 5 is, great. And if you don't, don't worry, I'm going to explain all of that sort of stuff. I'm going to lead you through the process. We've been doing this quite a bit now. And um, yes, it's, it's an evolved. It is definitely 5e compatible. So if you're if you've got people who are just don't want to walk away from 5e, it's all right. But you, you've got a lot of different things going on here, which can make things quite interesting, for sure. Anyway, I'm going to put up a poll. Feel free to take part in that poll. And uh, for those of you who are looking at the artwork on the thumbnail, uh, Diago, you are correct. The thumbnail image is from a different game, okay, from somewhere else. I was given artwork for this. But I could not use the files because they're all Photoshop files. And unfortunately, I don't use Photoshop. So <laughs> it didn't really work out quite the way I was hoping. You will need dice today, people. I'm going to get you to build the character. And uh, I will jot down all the information into a fillable PDF in a second. Uh, I'll be showing you the, the document as we go. Um, the physical book I have, but also I do have a PDF and a fillable um, character sheet. So my suggestion is grab your six-sided dice. You will need four of them, or at least one six-sided dice that you can roll four times. And you'll need um, your brain turned on, ready to do some creation. Okay, so grab some food, some drink, make sure you're comfortable, and uh, let's go. Hi, welcome to How to RPG. My name is Fred Wheeler, and today I want to talk about role-playing games. We are building characters today, that's right. We're going to build a character. It's going to be a martial class. It is part of Ultra Modern 5, created by Chris Deus. Uh, I have been working my way through this. We've got quite a few classes left to go, and the martial has got a very a Western feel to it, for sure. But it's also a leader, okay? The martial is, is something else. It's a different animal to what you might be expecting. What you'll find is when we build a character for Ultra Modern 5, there are some steps and stages. We know what class we're going to be playing, okay? If you want the class information for Ultra Modern 5, the, the Redux, the page number is 58. It starts at page 58, but the page number for the, the martial is 77. That's the page number you need to start at. Then we're going to do a birth. Now, a birth is just a race or species. Okay, it's your birth. We'll be covering that. That starts on page 18 and works its way forward. Uh, we're not going to do archetypes because archetypes have a set system and they start at level 3. And we're not going to level 3. We're just going to level 1. It's going to be complicated enough to do just a level 1 character, frankly. So you're not going to go any further than that. But archetypes do start on page 98. But I'm not using them today, but you can if you wanted to. Uh, life. Life path is your background. For those of you who are familiar with D&D 5e, backgrounds are a thing. And this is the life path. We start on page 36 for our life path. There are a couple of things we can select here. And you can make your own, but we're not going to do that in a live stream. Bit too hard. Anyway, we also have to buy some gear or get some gear, and that will be on starting on page 116 and going on to the end of time, it seems. Uh, there is a lot of equipment that we can select from. We also have ladders. Now, ladders are optional. They are a feat system. They are a pathway of feats or a ladder of feats that you can select. You do not have to use them. Now, that's on page 48. If we have time, I might go over the ladder system. Uh, and we'll see how we go. I'm, I'm not going to promise anything because, as I said, there's an awful lot to actually cover in a very short space of time. And when you're sort of going through this and doing it, it's like, a lot of choices for people to make and I have to read out a lot of stuff so we'll see how we go anyway I'm glad to have Diago here Fred Huber how, how are you Fred Huber is a patron patrons make it possible to keep doing this sort of thing so let's let's crack into our character creation process make sure I got my phone going normally what we do here is yeah jpegs do rule fred hubert you're right when it comes to images jpegs do rule but um when you're dealing with a publisher and chris is a publisher they they don't use jpegs <laughs> it's the, it, they, they use whatever the file is or file system that they were given from the person who created the art and of course that'll be a photoshop file more than likely i just didn't figure that out <laughs> i just didn't figure that out we need a character name okay so hashtag 
what is the character's name? Let's start with that, and I will bring you over to my uh, fillable PDF, and we'll get started. Where are we? One screen here, this screen here, that screen there. Ta-da! There we go. This is it. This is our fillable PDF. And the first thing we're going to put into here is our class, which is Marshall. Marshall. Uh, we are level one. We're not going to go any further than level one, otherwise it's going to be too difficult. Um, we won't have a name for it just yet, but depending on... Hello, Pale Rider. How are you doing? Starbuck. You want to call him Starbuck? Sure. Okay. If somebody comes up with a better name, I'll put that name down. But right now we have Starbuck. Uh, <laughs> okay, what I need to do is I need to get you guys rolling dice, okay? I need to get you doing some stuff before you start getting bored, right? That's exactly how it works. So we're going to do roll up all of our ability scores. We're going to roll four six-sided dice for our ability scores. You're going to give me all the numbers. I'll do the adding and subtracting. I'm going to be dropping the lowest number. I'll do that. Just give me all four numbers. So hashtag roll... 4d6 for the ability scores. All right. And we have Daft Milton. Dra Drat. Is it Drat Milton? Drat Milton. There we go. Now, here we go. Let's, let's go Drat Milton. Let's go Drat Starbuck. Starbuck Milton? Starbuck Milton? I don't know. Which one is it going to be? Starbuck. Strat, Starbuck, or <laughs> something like that. Okay, all right, so we've got some dice rolling. So we need to have six sets. Those of you who are new here and you've never done this before, it's all right, just roll away and I'll take I'll take your numbers. Um, Pale Rider and, oh, there we go. Jericho Cross. Let's go with Jericho, Jericho, Starbuck. <laughs> Does it flow off the tongue? Not really, but we'll do that. Oh, let's give him a middle name as well. <laughs> it's going to Jericho Drat Starbuck. God blimey. What a mouthful. Okay. Okay. All right. There we go. It's just a name. <laughs> I've, I've got three different versions going on here. And we have, oh my Lord, we have four, six sets of numbers. I better take these down and do that now. I will. Uh, <laughs> Diago, you're going to have to roll some dice here. Otherwise, um, I'm going to have to take Fred's um, quadruple one. Fred, Fred Huber rolled four ones across the board. <laughs> okay, I've, I've shoved in just about every single name there is. Okay, all right. The name is, is something. It's one of those. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, yes, you, you better start rolling some dice, some Diego. Otherwise, Fred Huber's um, quadruple ones are going to be winding up on the list. So let me do the first one, which is six and a six and a four and a six, which is high numbers. So we drop the four, okay, and we take the sixes, which comes out as an 18, which is the highest we can get. I'm just going to chuck it straight into strength. Don't worry about this. That I'm going to put it in different places. There we go. Diego's made sure that we don't get those some um, those ones going in there. Um, it is possible for new people to override what Fred Huber has rolled up, or even Pale Rider. You just got to get in there. <laughs> Pale Rider. All right. Your your numbers here are. You got a six, a five, a five, and a six. All right. So good. So we drop one of the fives. We're only going to keep three numbers, and that comes out at 12. That's a 17. That's a really high number. Don't worry about where I'm putting them right now. I'm just dropping them in, okay? We will move them around if we need to. Okay, next. Uh, Pale Rider, you've rolled a 6, a 4, a 5, and a 6. So we drop the 4. We keep the... Okay, so we get another 17, which is like... Really high numbers. Are you guys actually rolling these? Are you just playing with me? Okay, um, Fred Huber, you have rolled up a five, a four, a four, and a three. Drop the three, it's the lowest number. So we keep the five and the fours. Uh, it comes out at nine, 13. Our next one is going to be a 13. 
Okay, cool. And we've got triple six, oh, quadruple sixes. How did that happen? There's a lot of lucky people today. And six, 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 six. Um, I feel like somebody, so we drop one of the sixes, becomes an 18. How did we get such huge numbers today? Um, I will never be um, the wiser, I suppose, if you just put in whatever the heck you've decided to make up. Um, Diago, I'm taking your five, three, four, and five over the uh, the last entry from Fred. Okay. Oh, you want to override some of these numbers? We can do that. We can do that. I can change some of them out. The last one here is a five, a three, a four, and a five. Okay, so I drop the three, keep the fives. 14 is the last one. 14, 14. Okay. I believe, Fred, I believe you really rolled. I believe it. I, I believe it. <laughs> okay, so we're doing pretty good. Pale Rider, you literally almost rolled ex exactly the same as Diago in that one. Okay, all right, so, and uh, we will shuffle out one of these, I'll take out, take out one of the really high numbers here, and you rolled a one, one, four, four, good, all right, so we'll just shift out that one, 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 four, four, over, I override my first roll with the last, okay, yep, I can do that. No problems, Fred. We'll do that. So four, so we drop one of the ones from Diego. Keep one, four, four. It comes out as a nine. So the top one will be a nine. That's, uh, thank you. Thank you, Fred. I appreciate that. That's great. So we've got that sort So we've got our numbers. We're going to come back to that because they're going to change because of our birth or our race or species. The hat's got to come off. <sighs> Too hot in here. My windows are closed. My door is closed. It is like an oven in here. And I'm not going to be able to cope so first task first task is we've got our basic martial stuff now I would go over the different class stuff that you get what I'm going to do is I'm not going to read out everything first because we want to make some choices I want to get you making the decisions first before I start having to dump all the information into the um, the sheet so page 77 should get us to where we need to be uh, it's a very, very big document. Here we go. Here is our marshal. And uh, our hit points are going to be nice and simple. I'll come back to that. It's just 8 plus your constitution modifier. Once we know what our modifier for our constitution actually is, we'll deal with that. Uh, our proficiencies, I'll drop all that stuff in later. But what we want to focus on here is this bit here. So I'm just going to zoom in a little bit so you can actually see magnified so we get comm commanding presence team powers and um, team presence and for the good of the team so there's a lot of things you get starting out the gate as this particular class so uh, I'm going to just drop these in and we'll make some choices and we'll put that stuff in for sure but what I want to do first is if I can just copy and paste it here we go I will those various things we'll come back to them there's a couple of them where you don't have to make a choice it's just a it's just an ability you get and in some cases you do have to make a choice but you get four things that you can do coming up the bat as a, um, a marshal which I know sounds like it's very front-loaded because it is very front-loaded uh, Chris is one of the sort of the sorts of people as a designer who believes in getting as much of the main aspects of your class straight away rather than later on now whether you like that sort of thing or not it's sort of beside the point i'm just here to show you how to build the character okay walk you through show you some stuff that sort of thing so i'll come back to this and we'll make some choices a little bit later next let's deal with deal with birth because birth is probably the next smartest thing to con consider so let's go with birth. Now births are on page 18. And it should hopefully be close to 18. I will just zoom out a bit so you can actually see a bit more. Here we go. This is the birth page. 
Okay, I think that's, yeah, that's good enough. So I'm going to work my through, way through. I'm going to I'm going to prompt, basically, for you to select a birth. I'm going to go through them. I'm not going to tell you every aspect of the births. I'm just going to give you a basic idea of what it is, okay? And you pick something. Okay, open the door. Okay, I will. I will. Here we go. All right, so I'm feeling a little bit better. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. Right, so births. Hashtag. Select a birth or race. Here we go. So working our way through here. We have the, um, the Kona, Kony. The Kono or Kono, 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 I feel like it's the Kono, something like that. It's basically a alien with many arms and a flat looking head and lots of eyes. We made, we used this last week actually. Um, okay, so we've got that. We have the Katim, which is basically a great huge insect with multiple arm um, limbs and so forth. Okay. So we've got the Katine, we have the Altered. The Altered is, well, it is exactly what it sounds like. You have muta mutations, so um, you have all hands, it can be aquatic, you can have um, the various changes to your arms, big nose, carpus, chompers, deformities, um, digigrade, en enhanced, fine hairs, fragile, iron nails, um, the images kind of to indicate that you, it's it's really quite odd. It's the altered, uh, keen eyes, keen hearing. You can be large legs, metabolism diseases, rhino hide, simple def deficiencies, slow speed, tail, wicked tongue, wings. M can change your metabolism. Uh, you can be uh, mute. It's a drawback. So sometimes these things you select, you, we have a, a drawback. Uh, wings, I said that, quills. We have the animist. The animist is basically just like a, a combination of humanoid and animal. So there's a whole bunch of them. It's the basic structure, and then you can pick something like the subrace, which is the ape. You can be badger. This one here, the images of the goat version. Uh, we have elephant, bat, bear, frog, goat, as I said, bear and boar, crocodile, hawk, shark, tiger, horse, possum, turtle, wolf, rabbit, and rat. We can also be an automation. Okay, you can be sort of like a robot. So there's the robot version, because there's two options, the robot version or the android version. You can be a humanoid, uh, a human. Humans aren't particularly fancy. It's pretty basic stuff. You're not going to get an awful lot. Um, but yeah, there is the option to be human. Uh, there's also the morpher which is basically you can change the way you transform yourself in some way, okay? So you can have the clay version, you can have um, formed shield, um, form weapon, uh, shape her, yeah. You could be quite disgusting. Um, <laughs> splice is when the human DNA is spliced with some sort of animal DNA, and you kind of get a combination. It's not a full-blown sort of like beast humanoid, it's a little bit, it's a combination of them. So there's one that's for the, the bat, the bear, the beetle, the bee, the cat, the viper, the chameleon, dolphin, wolf, uh, wolverine, the eagle, horse, rabbit, rabbit, spider. Okay, we have the tuna. The tuna is very, very simple. There's nothing but much going on there. You've got a little bit of sort of psychic power, basically, a bit of magical power, if that's the sort of thing you're into. They look pretty much like a human. Um, yokai, yokai is another option. Uh, yokai, I'm not going to go into too much detail. There's not a lot there to pick from, but there are some things. Okay, and that's that's it. Those are the different options available to you. Jedi, we'll we'll be doing Jedi soon enough, but today we're not Jedi. Altered quills, aquatic. You want altered? We're doing altered today. Interesting. So 
If it wasn't obvious, this is set up so that it can be used in a science fiction setting, but also in a modern setting, or even a fantasy setting. But a lot of it is set up for sort of more modern, or just near future, or just spacey sci-fi stuff. So let's go and find the altered, which should be, that's not that, here we go, I believe we're here. So the altered, okay, so we've got some mutations to, to, to select, we'll go through that soon enough, but we'll now at least take the altered and transfer that onto our sheet. Um, that's the background, that's player name, ah, here we go, altered. Altered, I know what it is now, that's good, I'm not going to do archetypes today, so we'll get rid of that. Um, ladder, I'm not too sure, we're not going to worry too much about the alignment, so we'll go in A for that. And we have zero experience points right now. You want the altered, iron claw, quills, aquatic, okay, interesting. Okay, so we'll come back to this, I want to make another choice, I want you guys making more choices, so I just have to fill in the, the gaps, basically. So let's do the next thing. We've done out, we know what our class is, we've got our birth or our race. Uh, now we're going to do our life path. And life path is on page 36. 36. So if I just scroll on down here, this is the life path. So I'm going to get you to pick a life path. You want the altar to go. Everybody wants the altar today. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Uh, pick a life path. Okay, so I'm going to tell you what the life paths are. You can, I'm not going to do this in the live stream, but you can make your own life path up. You can you can customize it just like in D&D 5e in the player's handbook where it says you can make your own backgrounds. Life path is a background. You can make your own. You can do that. It's, it's there. It's an option. Okay, all right, now, what are the, the pre-made ones that already exist? We have affluent. You, you get to choose uh, between deceptional persuasion, one musical instrument, two languages, some fine clothes, and a bit of money. You've got the bruiser, okay, a um, bit more physical, so you get to choose either athletics or acrobatics, get one language, a trophy, and uh, a few, a few a bit of money, common clothes. Uh, we have the delinquent, you get to pick from sleight of hand or deception, you get tool proficiency, thieves tools, you get one language, you get to about $15, and some common clothes. You can be um, a disciple if you want to uh, you pick either religion or nature one of your choice languages doesn't matter holy item and some books some symbols and some common clothes or the drifter the drifter is you pick deception or survival get two languages of your choice a set of common clothes backpack bed roll blanket and five uh, five dollars in coins you could be an intellectual okay that means you would either select engineering or science, two languages, a set of common clothes, a handful of textbooks, and $15. You can be a laborer. You pick animal handling or athletics. You pick one set of artisan tools, uh, one language. You get a set of artisan tools as part of your equipment, $50. And yeah, progeny, you get to select either athletics or performance. A tool proficiency, which is going to be musical instruments, or an, one artisan tool, you decide. One language, one musical instrument, or an artisan tool or kit. Um, a trophy and $15. You could be a recluse. The recluse is pick either computer, use computer, or investigation. Two languages, a set of common clothes, um, a personal computer, $20 in um, prepaid cards, and $10 in cash. Uh, we have the regular Joe. You either pick one skill of your choice, doesn't matter what it is. Tool proficiency, one tool, any one tool you like, or vehicle of your choice. So you can pick vehicle or tool, uh, one language, you get $50, and yeah, you're ready to go. Smooth talker, you get persuasion or intimidation, you get one gaming tool proficiency, um, or game set proficiency, you get one language, one game set, a set of fine clothes, $50, and... There you go. All right, so those are the options. I have read out everything I possibly can. Let's see how you guys have decided on this. It's going to be interesting. I've got to make sure I make a note of all of the things that you wanted to um, do with the altered. 
Otherwise, we're going to have some problems. Altered. And you guys have noted down quills. Uh, iron claws. Iron claws. Uh, aquatic. I don't know if we can do all of that, but we'll see what, how we go. Aquatic. Okay. I'm Batman. Orphaned billionaire. All right, it sounds like we're being affluent. So we're going affluent, are we? Is that the is that the the going <laughs> decision here? The affluent background. Dun dun dun. You were born into privilege. That's right. You were born into privilege. Okay, affluent it is. Uh, affluent. Affluent as in being affluent rather than something else. That's pop popping into my brain. Uh, which I shouldn't be. Uh, <laughs> the affluent you can have. You can have that. Let's put that in there. Uh, background. Here we go. This is a life path. F. Affluent. Okay. We've got it. Ladder. Not too sure if we're going to get to that. We'll see how we go. It really depends. Um, Diego. We're going to check your name down again. I'm pretty sure I put Diego in here before, but you're here now. Unless there's somebody else in chat who's uh, wanting their name on this. Okay, cool. So we've done a lot of that. We've done that, done that. What's next on our tasks that we need to complete? Well, what I think we'll do is we'll deal with all of the background stuff, transferring all that stuff over, okay, from being affluent. So you have to pick either deception or persuasion as a skill. You're thinking, I'm, I'm thinking the penguin, are you? <laughs> All right. Pick a skill. And that is going to be deception. Or persuasion. Pick a skill out of those. Uh, you also need to pick one musical instrument. There's a few things we have to put in here. Fine clothes, I can put that into the gear. You've got $20. You've got a leather wallet. Fine clothes, leather wallet. So let's do that. Fine clothes. Leather wallet. Um, I'm pretty sure it said uh, 200 dollars you at two hundred dollars just put in the gold section for two hundred we go um deception put oh god cool. i'm going to be rolling off aren't i and persuasion all right so we've done it's done persuasion it is two votes for persuasion done bagpipes <laughs> hashtag pick a musical instrument all right somebody has voted for bagpipes we need a musical instrument uh, and then we need two languages which you can just make up I, don't, I mean heck I don't know what this will what languages are on this world so you just tell me <laughs> you just tell me harmonica we've got a harmonica we've got a bagpipe <laughs> it's gonna be interesting I'm tempted to just give you all of them <laughs> that because that would just be hilarious. It really would. Um, and then hashtag pick or make up two languages. Okay, we'll do that in a second. All right, I think I've got this is done. That we're getting to. We're going to do that in a second. I said fine clothes, got that, 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 that's it. Okay, so that's, that's the affluent side of things mostly sorted, which is good. It's good. We've made those decisions, which is excellent. Very happy about that. Diego Banjo. All right. Okay, people. All right. This is what we're going to do here. You've got, you've got, <laughs> you've got some proficiencies in, in a tool, a musical instrument. So... Mm. 
instrument. Um, it is a <laughs> Har Harmon like banjo bagpipe bagpipes. Let, let's get real. We, we can make up whatever type of musical instrument we like. Uh, so I've combined all three. <laughs> English and Vulcan for the languages. <laughs> okay, okay, all right. <laughs> languages. Languages. Um, gut aside, common trade. Oh, oh, I think, let's go with, um, go to the new guy. I'm going to go with, I'm going to go with gutter side. I like it. Gutter side, whatever that is. Gutter side and Vulcan. <laughs> We're probably going to get some more languages anyway. Because they tend to put languages under um, your birth or your race or species, which frankly makes no sodding sense whatsoever. But I'll let them have it. They can have it for now. Okay. It's not, I guess it's not the end of the world. All right, so we've got our languages, we've got our musical instrument, we've got everything. So that's the background stuff done. We need to go back to the altered because we actually have to make sure we've got our, our birth or race set up before we start fluffing around with the class stuff. So this is where I have to punch in, what's the number? Uh, birth is 18. Altered is fairly close in, so we will just rip on down here. Here we go. So, what do we get? Oh, okay, so this is how our altered works. We increase one ability score by two and another by one. So, that's, that's our problem. We're going to have to start setting out where our ability scores are going to be. That's probably going to be a big factor. So I guess what we will do before we start doing that is give you a basic idea of the gist of our martial class. If you want to shoot stuff, you're going to need good dexterity to be able to shoot stuff. If you want to be strong then you need uh, and get up in their face and smack them hard, then you're going to need that. So with your martial, you get light armor and medium armor proficiency. Okay, these are things that you get. So you do have the ability to have reasonable armor. Armor, light, and medium. I think that's right. Light and medium. Uh, you get simple weapons, one-handed and two-handed small arms, and you get access to heavy weapons, but you probably won't even be able to afford one because you won't have enough money, but eventually you will be able to get them. Simple weapons are literally simple weapons. One-handed and two-handed small arms, pretty easy to get hold of. The, the, the going thing is everybody wants to grab a, a grenade launcher. <laughs> um, oh, were you? <laughs> Interesting, Pale Rider. <laughs> so tools, all ground vehicles and all aircraft. So you have, this is your proficiency, all ground vehicles and aircraft. I know that sounds bizarre. Okay, remember, well, it's Ultra Modern 5. It's not fantasy, it's Ultra Modern 5. So it's going to have a little bit different of a feel to it. Our saving throws, we get intelligence and charisma. So I'll mark them now. Intelligence and charisma, as you might expect. Those are our saving throws that we're proficient with. Um, I'm going to grab all of this and drop this in so that we have that proficiency set up. Paste. Okay, so we have the basic gist of it. Now we get to pick some skills. So I think what we will do is let's pick those skills now and then we'll start arranging stuff. It gives me time to put things in. Okay, so let's go with pick four skills. Hashtag pick for skills. You get a lot. Now the skills you can pick from are the following. You can pick from um, computer use or use computer, 
history, investigation, insight, medicine, perception, survival, deception, intimidation, and persuasion. Now, there's no point picking persuasion because you already have persuasion from your background. It's all good, okay? So, he needs every stat to be good. Well, he doesn't really need every stat to be good. There is, you're allowed to play a character with weaknesses. That's cool. That's fine. You can do that sort of thing. It, it, it's not the end of the world. It really isn't. <laughs> okay, here we go. Equipment. So we've got here two small arms. Two small arms. Um, and they're going to be worth about 300 each. Okay, and a set of armor. Armor. We'll deal with that in a second. We'll get there soon enough. 300 or less. And he gets 200 in gear. Which means you're going to have 400 in gear, potentially. Oh, okay. So a few, few decisions to be made. So we've got here um, survival, perception, computer, investigation. Okay, fine. Fine. We'll take those. Perception, survival, investigation, deception. Have you guys just about picked exactly the same things? You have just about done so. The only one was the deception. Okay, all right, let's go here. So, survival, one. Perception, two. Investigation, three. And the last one, Computer use. Sidekick has computer skills. Oh, if I'm your DM, your side your sidekick's dying first. <laughs> be be warned. <laughs> I always target small, cute animals and sidekicks before the main characters. I'm playing with your people, or am I? Am I really? Am I really? <laughs> anyway. What they said. Okay, no, Diego, got it. All right, let's let's um, deal with our next task, which is we need to assign our ability scores before we start increasing stuff. Otherwise, it's going to get confusing. These are our current numbers, right? So, um, hashtag, hashtag, uh, where do the ability scores go. So I'm going to order them. Okay, I'm going to give you the numbers. And here we go, hashtag ability scores. And the numbers that we have, we have an 18, two 17s, um, 14, 13, and a 9. I think that's right. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, yes. Poof. Okay, so my suggestion is just tell me where you want those numbers to be, okay? Um, a lot of people, when they're doing this, the easiest way they find this is to just go um, strength, and then they write the number, or str, whatever the number is that you want to be associated with the strength, and they just work their way down, okay? Or they give you the order. If I give you the order, they can just say, this is the thing I want at the top, and they just give you the order, and you just work your way down. It's pretty It's pretty easy. You can go from highest to lowest, and I just go through, and I shift things around. And I'll take everybody's um, feedback into consideration, because I always try to do that anyway. So, we're doing pretty well so far. What's our time like? Oh, we, we're doing really well. Like, that's, like, fantastically well. And I think, yep. I believe that's doing very nicely. Diago, have you made some decisions? Uh, we could also do an origin. I had kind of failed to mention the origin, but maybe I should mention it. Um, I will drop in some of this information here. Okay, so while I'm waiting for you guys to decide where you want to put that, let's go over commanding presence. Commanding presence. Oh, do I want to do that? I really want to do all of the, the class stuff last. 
I really think I should do the class stuff last. Yeah, let's do the class stuff last. Let's get back onto our booth, which is 18. 18. Come on there. Come on, where are you, Altered? Because our Altered should be able to give us roughly some idea of what's going on here. So, uh, like humans, Altered very widely in height and build, but your, si your size is medium. Your base speed is 30 feet, so we can put that in now. Let's do that now. 30 feet, okay. Uh, that might change depending on what alterations we have. Languages, your, you speak the common language. So, we'll just go just common here, we'll add that in. Uh, we've got common, gutter side. Common. Common is basically just English, isn't it? Let's go English. That's probably what it is. I'm doing that because I know somebody had written English in before, so I like I'm just swatch, swap out common and put English. There we go. <laughs> so we're doing quite nicely. We'll do the increases in a second. Diago's put in his votes. Cool. Very nice. So how's this look? Break the tie. Okay, so. Highest. Mm, you've gone lowest. Highest number's Dex. Dex Charisma. Okay, so it looks like Dex is going high. Sweet. The tie is broken. Let's go back and deal with the tie, shall we? So Dex is going to be the 18. Uh, from highest to lowest, Dex it is. Dex is now 18. That's fine. Um, the next number down is Strength, Pale Rider, and Interfall, you, and then you've gone with Wisdom. We're missing a 7. No, no, no. Int. So it's going to be Int. Int is going to be a 17. We're going to have a 17 and an Int. Okay. Whew. Whew. I'm getting there, people. Wave at all five people lurking. <laughs> we will wave at those people who are lurking. You can lurk away. It's all fine. No problems. Uh, <laughs> next. So I've done two. So Dex. Int. Um, then we had Charisma. Charisma. Con. Wisdom. Charisma, Con, Wisdom. Oh my god, it's all over the place. Okay. Charisma, Con, Wisdom. What, what a way. Hmm. How do I make that work? Con, Wisdom. I'm going to roll the dice. Okay. Let's just roll the dice. So it was the third choice, which is going to be Pale Rider's choice, Con. Con, 17. All right. Con. Con. Okay. Huh. Here we go. Um, Diago Wisdom, Charisma, uh, could be Backward Wisdom 14. All right, okay, all right, okay, all right, okay, 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 all right. Sweet, fine, take that out. Charisma. Okay, you got your 17 on there, okay? You got your 17 on, on, on Charisma. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't want it to be too low. I get it. Okay, next. Um, so next was strength for you. Strength. We've already done those. Um, con. And you had charisma. Wisdom. Cool, blimey. We're all over the place a little bit. So I'm I'm just going to go with 14 is wisdom. There we go. The 14 goes there. Okay. 14 wisdom. Wisdom. And the last two, I'm really not too sure what I'm doing here. So it looks to me like strength was mid-range for Fred Huber. And for Pale Rider, it was uh, sort of under there. So okay. And then what was what was being dumped? What was the dump? Well, it can't be the con, surely. Okay. So make the 13. 13? Something like that. Okay, something like that. That'll do. Something like that. <laughs> you, you're probably going to shoot everybody anyway, frankly. I suspect that's what's going to happen. 
So, con. And then strength would be the last one. Okay, all right. Not the perfect sort of arrangement, but I did my best. Cool, blimey, talk, take a, talk about taking a little bit from here and a little bit from there. The good news is you get to adjust these scores, okay? Even though these scores are now positioned, you get to increase one score by two and another score by one. So let's make that happen, shall we? Hashtag um, increase one ability score by two. And increase another ability score by one. Because that is how the. <laughs> you never played this system? It won't, it won't matter. We're just building a character. It, we're just building a character. It won't matter in the end. Okay. So while you guys are deciding on ability score increases, whether which one's going to go up by two and which one's going to go up by one, remember the numbers that I have here are strength is nine, dex is 18, con is 13, intelligence is 17, wisdom is 14, and charisma is 17. Okay? Dex and strength, you want to go up? Well, dex by two, strength by one. Okay, good. Good, keep going, keep thinking about that. Let's deal with how our mutations work because our mutations as an altered are gonna be very important to us. You guys have already given me an idea of what they are, but let's read the rules to see exactly what the gist is of this. While, while Diago and Pale Rider are putting in their two cents and anybody here, you're welcome to put in your two cents as well. Okay, so first off, there are no altered sub races. So there's no sub races for the altered. Instead, what follows are a specific various modifications you can possess. Select up to two. You may only you may also select a single drawback. Okay? This allows you to select a third mutation. So in other words, we pick two mutations or we pick three mutations, but we have to take a drawback. Does that make sense? Okay. That would allow us to hopefully pick up all three, but we'd have to take a drawback, which would, could be quite a lot of fun if you ask me. Um, you can accept a plus one level adjustment to select two additional mutations. We won't do that because that's just not going to happen. We're at level one as it is. Um, there are two tiers of power. Choose the same one twice gains the second tier. So if you select the same one twice, it goes up a second tier. Okay, see what you're doing here. Some are also listed with a third option, which is feet, indicating if you pick both tiers, you can select this third ability as a feat later. Um, altered mutations cannot be changed after character creation at least not without a strong story justification. So Chris has got a very, very strong approach to how he does character creation and how character creation can change or not change once you start playing the game. Personally, myself, I couldn't give a shit. <laughs> as long as you don't do it in the middle of the game. I just get my players to change whatever the heck they're going to change. As long as it's not their gear and money and their character name, they can change everything else. I couldn't care less. So that little bit in the end, in there, Chris, I'm going to just kind of, kind of ignore a little bit, okay? <laughs> All right, Diago has gone with this. Oh, he's going to go with int, not strength. Question mark on the int, though. Okay. I like when characters suck at something. Well, we, they, it can certainly suck. Pale Rider's gone with strength plus two and charisma plus one. You're switching to dex and charisma. Okay. You want to go dex and charisma. <laughs> okay, all right. So it looks to me like Dex is definitely getting a two. Dex is definitely getting a two. So we have a 20 now, which is really high. Okay, and then it, it's a trade-off between charisma, intelligence, and strength. I'm going to roll a dice for this one. Okay, I'm going to roll a dice for this one. So the first one to two is going to be strength. Three to four is going to be int, and your charisma for Diago is the five or six and i roll the three and it's going to be int I, 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 is that right oh no hang on that was that? oh charisma it's supposed to be charisma charisma it's charisma not int okay 
There's two charismas. Oh, I see what you've done here. Now I see. Okay, we're going charisma. Charisma is going up. Okay, got it. You change just your choice. Okay, didn't need to roll the dice in the first place. Okay, sweet. Now let's put in our, our modifiers. So I'm going to put the big, num big number and make it small. Okay, I'm going to put it below so our modifiers actually stand out so we can actually see them. <laughs> uh, 13, 17, 14, and 18. Right, nice. Now, an 18 is a plus 4, I'm pretty sure. Plus 4. Uh, 14 is a plus 2. Uh, 17 is the plus 3, isn't it? Plus 3. Uh, 13 is a plus 1. Uh, 20 is a plus 5, which is, which is nuts. And we have a minus 1 to our strength. There we go. There we go. Which means I can start putting numbers in, but I don't want to do that again. I want to keep moving towards giving you options things that you can do so our our marshal is an eight sided dice so at first level we're just going to take eight plus our con modifier which is plus one so eight and one is nine so that's our maximum hit points nine current hit points nine so no temporary hit points not applicable in a okay and how does this work we get one hit die and how does it work it is a d8 plus one for when we need to use it okay so we've got that filled in um life went so we didn't do an origin and we might do an origin that would be kind of fun too but we still need to finish off the altered state okay so you guys have given me aquatic so aquatic is fine i have no problems with aquatic that's tier one which means we can swim you have a slightly staly skin yes What's this? Zero plus zero plus D. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> you gain a swim speed of 20 feet. So you can now swim 20 feet. So that's not bad. It's not a terrible thing to have. Uh, we can put it under life events. Put it there. And that's aquatic. Somebody asked for aquatic, you get it. Aquatic, tier one. All right. Uh, slightly scaly skin, we can get rid of that, but we don't really need to worry about that. We just want the mechanics. Um, so uh, you have gills and can breathe underwater. You're going to swim speed. Okay, so that's good. So we've got that first one down. Let's deal with the next one. You guys had said something about iron quill, iron claws or iron quills or something like that. The strength noodle. <laughs> All right, so let's go down. We're going to go down and try to find iron claws and quill. Where are you? Iron claws. Iron, iron nails. Iron nails. This is what you wanted. Okay, here we go. Let's grab the iron nails. <laughs> Um, do you want to know what it does? Would you like to know? <sighs> okay. These don't crack. They are also long and resemble silver. Uh, you can grab onto basically anything. You have a climb speed of 20 feet. You ha Your hands become natural melee weapons. Oh dear. They inflict 1d4 slashing or piercing damage. They have the finesse and light property. Wow, okay, so iron nails. Let's put that in there. Iron nails. And it is... I'll just do this like that. Make sure I've got space for it all. Uh, paste this. There's a lot of information. Uh, they don't. Uh, these don't crack. They're long or simple silver. We can get rid of this stuff. Uh, you can grab onto basically anything. I don't think we need to worry about that. You have a climb speed though. Let's just put that in there. Uh, you have a climb speed of 20 feet. Your hands become natural weapons. They inflict 
uh, uh, piercing damage and you have the light weapon. Okay, so that's rather a lot of information, but we will leave it there. That's fine. And piercing. Why have I got a piercing? That'll do. What's Thank you. Idea? Right, next one. We were looking for quills. Apparently somebody wants quills. Here we go. Now you're picking three, which means you have to take a drawback, people. There's a drawback required. Uh, here we go. So this is, your hair is actually composed of sharp quills. Any creature making a melee attack on you suffers one point of piercing damage. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's go. Quills. Quills. And... Here we go. Actually, a post of sharp. Um, any creature. Okay, so I think that we can do this, and that's that. It shifts this. Okay, we need to have a drawback now. A drawback. <laughs> um, I'm cost. I'm I'm costing my iron nails with po coating coating my iron nails with poisonous nail polish. <laughs> Okay. You want a big nose as a drawback? Is there a big nose? Is, is that a drawback? I don't see it. All right, drawback. Uh, you said bigger nose. Is there a big nose here? Oh, it is. Uh, it's not a big. Uh, it's not a drawback though. So you have to pick one that's an actual drawback to be able to select it. Big nose is not a, a drawback. It's a. It's a benefit. So you have to pick a drawback. I'll tell you what they are. You get deformity. You possess a visible deformity that makes hiding from authorities and bigots difficult. You have disadvantage with all checks involving charisma. You probably don't want that one. <laughs> Note, if using altered or a template for rubber forehead, aliens do not use this as a drawback. Instead, it is situational when dealing with blah de blah de blah de blah de blah Okay. Uh, fragile, the amount of hit points you recover from spending hit dice is reduced by one per die. Okay, you could do that one. Fragile. Um, what is another drawback that you can actually select? Uh, you have simple deficiency. Your maximum or or either your maximum in either strength, dexterity, or constitution or wisdom, choose one is is twelve instead of twenty, and that score can be no higher than eight at character creation. Okay, eight at character creation. I I don't know. You, it's a pretty pretty bad one. It's a pretty bad one. You can choose uh, for intelligence or charisma to be slightly impaired as a role play choice by assigning. Yeah, so you'd probably wind up with one of your scores going lower. So strength could go from nine to eight if you wanted to do that. That'd be some simple um, deformity. That would be fine. Um, and it would never go any higher than that. So your maximum would have to be it. Would have to drop strength or dex or con. You probably don't want to drop dex, and you probably don't want to drop con, um, constitution. Not at character creation anyway. Slow. Your walking speed is reduced by five feet. So instead of thirty feet, you get twenty-five feet. You could do that one. Um, metabolic disease. You suffer from one of many non-communicable physical diseases, such as diabetes or uh, hemo, hemo uh, you may, uh, you may act normally, but you better not get sneezed up, sneezed on. You have disadvantage on ability checks with strength, dexterity, or constitution. You pick one, pick two. You better pick two. Whew. Uh, mute. Uh, you barely speak to set. To the satisfaction of all characters, you cannot say more than 30 words per day. Oh my gosh. Oh wow. Okay, so pick a drawback. Pick a drawback. Okay, you got to actually pick a real drawback. You want deficiency strength or slow? Fred Huber? Bad breath drawback. I don't think there's. Is there a bad breath drawback? I don't think there is a bad breath drawback. I'm pretty sure there is no bad breath. Um, it's big nose. No, it's not a drawback. Unfortunately, big nose is not a drawback. Mute. You want the mute one? 
<laughs> okay, so we've got mute. Um, Diago hasn't voted yet. That'll be interesting to see what you come up with. I'm going to take a quick toilet break because it is top of the hour and I, I really need to go. So I'm going to take that break and that will give you time to decide exactly what you want. I will be back in about five minutes or less. Okay, Arnold will look after you and we'll be back into this. Mute would be fun. It looks like there's two votes for mute. <clears throat> I am back. I'm feeling much better now. <sighs> okay, let's um, let's rock on, shall we? <laughs> let's rock on. So we can get mute down. Uh, where is the mute option? Here we go. Here it is. <laughs> it's a funny combination. It really is. When you think about it, it's pretty. It's a pretty funny com combination to have. Uh, for this character. Anyway, let's do that. Mute. Bracket. It's a drawback. Make sure that we know we actually have our drawback. And we have all of our birth or um, race species stuff lined up here. So you've got a quite a few different things going on here they're quite unusual you can see there's a lot of options to make a lot of variation on this character okay now we're on to class stuff now we actually have to start doing some class stuff and then buy some gear so let's let's do that shall we so back to the this class here we go uh, we've done our hit points already uh, we've selected our skills that we're proficient in. We'll do our equipment shortly. Uh, we are going to do, um, I'm going to go through commanding presence and the various choices that you have to make. And there are unfortunately a lot of choices as a marshal. So starting at first level, your words and actions generate a presence that can motivate or generally boost those you deem your allies. Select one commanding presence from the list below. These are always in effect. Each command commanding presence you possess can also be temporarily boosted after which you cannot boost it again until you finish a long rest unless otherwise stated you gain no benefit from your own command um, commanding presence or command presence at second level and again at third, third um, six, um, level 6 10 14 and 18 you can select either another commanding presence or increase the potential of your presence you already possess gaining the second tier ability. So there are different tiers. There's tier one, tier two. So I need to go through and tell you every single one of these different commanding presences. Okay, and there's a few. 
Okay, it's going to take me a little while. We'll get there, but it's yeah. There's there's a lot. There, there's 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 a little. <laughs> so let's start, shall we? So you can start making some choices. For example, since we're only going to be picking um, one one of these from the list at level one, thank God for that. Here we go. By example, uh, let me just mark this. I pick a commanding command presence. Okay, there we go. Pick a command presence. Here we go. Let me read them out. By example, in fact, I'm going to just zoom this in a little bit more because my eyes are old. I can zoom in more. Yeah, thank you very much. By example, you don't keep um, keep back an, an order for, um, from a distance. You stand shoulder to shoulder with, your, with, um, with those you lead. Allies you can see in here have advantage on intelligence, wisdom, and charisma saving throws. Holy shit. Okay. Okay. Um, exemplary example. Boost. This is if you take it, um, if you boost it, which, yeah, we wouldn't be able to boost it right now. So, yeah. Use an action and for, oh, yes, you can boost it. Uh, for an action for one minute, ten rounds, all allies within 20 feet of you gain a, gain a what? Plus one to armor class. If it goes to tier two, is this tier two here? Okay, there we go. That's better. Uh, tier two allies also gain advantage on constitution and strength saving throws as well. The bonus from exemplary example increases to plus two. Cool, blimey. There's a, that's a big one. All right, next. Field advice. Using only your words, you can call your comrades back from the most harmful of afflictions allies that can see and hear you double any effect that remains and uh, that removes exhaustion okay okay finishing a long rest reduces all allies exhaustion level by two which is handy if you either have it come up that is provided that the ally ha has also ingested some food and drink so in ultra modern 5 you'll find that exhaustion does come up unlike dnd 5e where it almost never comes up um, profound advice. This is the boost. Use an action to give a rousing speech and all allies that you can see and hear you reduce their exhaustion by one. Okay. So that's increasing it a bit, making it a bit better than it was before. Instead of th So you're going to reduce exhaustion not by two levels, but by three levels. Okay. Tier two. You gain a number of hit points equal to half your level that you can distribute distribute. To allies that you see and hear uh, when you when you and they finish a long rest. Okay, so it's a long rest ability. These additional hit points, uh, hit dice, must be used immediately or are lost. Additionally, when you use profound advice, each ally recovering hit points equal to a quarter of your current hit points. Okay, so that's that's interesting. We're not really going to be dealing with the tier two aspects of things. We're only going to be dealing with the the first the first part and the boost aspect. So I might not even read out the tier two stuff. There's not much point. I would just be wasting your time. Um, intimidating mug. Uh, opponents take one look at you and begin to rethink their approach. All enemies within ten feet of you treat the area as difficult terrain. So menacing mug. If you decide to boost it, which you can do. Okay, you can boost. But uh, you have to take a long rest. You can only do it once a day. As an action, you can double the range of intimidating mug for one minute or ten rounds. Okay. Mask of authority. Dun, dun, dun. Your friends believe themselves better, better knowing you are around. Ah, okay. Your friends believe themselves better knowing you are around. Okay. All allies that you can see and hear. Here you can re-roll one result of a one on a damage die they roll per hit. All right. Uh, per personification. Personification of authority. Boost. Use an action and for one minute, ten rounds, all allies that you can see in here gain a plus one bonus to damage rolls. Okay. All right. That's that one. Next. Um, stand as one. As long as you stand... No one falls. All allies that can see and hear you reduce all damage inflicted 
on them by one, two at tenth level. So it actually scales. Brotherhood. So the boost is, as an action, you can advise your allies on the best way to avoid damage. Select an energy type, acid, cold, fire, force, lightning, necrotic, poison, um, psychic, radiant, or thunder for one minute. Ten rounds. All allies that you can see, uh, see you gain resistance to that energy type. Okay, all right. Uh, strategic precision. You lead the attack, drawing allied fire to your target. Once per turn, if you hit a creature, pick one ally that you can see and hear you. The, the targeted ally gains a plus two bonus to, to the next attack roll. Okay, that's pretty good, actually. <laughs> that's once per turn you can do something like that. Strategic precision. It's pretty good. Plus two bonus on attack rolls. Strategic superiority boost. As an action, you can convey an attack plan for one minute or ten rounds. All allies that can see and hear you gain a plus one bonus to attack rolls against the last target you hit until the beginning of your next turn. All my, okay. Um, your selected ally still only gains a plus two bonus. I see. All right, so you so you have a selected ally that you pick, but the rest of your allies, the rest of your allies that aren't this one that you selected as your ally, they get a plus one bonus, and the other ones get a plus two bonus. So it's still better when you use the boost, obviously. It's still better. That's a lot. That, those are all of the commanding presences that I, I can see here. Instead, we have another feature here called starting at first level. It's for the good of the team. Starting at first level as an action. Okay, have you guys actually decided? All right, see you, Diago. If I missed you already and you're already gone, sorry about that. So have a decision about, make a decision about which commanding presence you like, and I'm going to start um, reading out the other stuff, and then we're going to start selecting some other bits and pieces. Starting at first level as an action, you can allow one ally within line of sight to take an action ordinarily available to her as a reaction as a reaction to you or as a additional action on her next turn. Additionally, you can swap your initiative order with another ally once per round. Okay, editorial note, the marshal selects an ally to take an action or as a reaction to the marshal selecting them or the ally gains a second action on her next turn. So I, I understand what they're trying to say here. I, I get it. So let's, let's take this information for the good of the team put it into our character sheet. It's going to be a bit bit crowded. But hey, we'll do the best we can, okay? And uh, I don't know if I can shorten that. It's, it's a bit hard to shorten something like that. That's quite complicated. All right, there's a lot going on there. So next, team power. Starting at first level and every fourth level after, you can select one team power. Several powers are only available to choose at level five okay all right so these are a whole bunch of different things that we need to go through but we need to get we need to get the other one locked down commanding presence needs to be decided on otherwise we're going to have some problems and yeah and then i will read through all of the the team powers that you have access to uh the ones that you can use at first level that is how are we doing here Strategic positioning. Pale Rider has decided. Dun dun dun. Okay. I'm fine with that. St strategic precision. Yeah, strategic precision. This is the one you want here. Uh, and I'll put in the boost information. Go copy. And. Okay. Commanding presence, and we've got to go here. Um, let's go paste. A lot of information. Do do do. Let's just do this. What did I do? I pressed a button. Nothing happened. Why did nothing happen? Do it again. That's better. <laughs> that helps. I'll just pull it all together, don't I? Oh, come on, you really? I press that button there, click, 
and then do it. Okay, all right, cool. Talk about. The boost action. Come on, shift. All right, there we go, there we go. Come on, there we go. Uh, that's this one. Okay. And this is strategic precision. Strategic precision. Um, where are we? Precision. Okay. All right. Can I get this to move? Yes. All right. It's all, it's all pulled together. There's a lot of information there, people. I'm trying to tr I'm dump stuff in. No, no, it's all right. It's all right. It's got it. I've got it. Strategic precision. It's done. So we have our commanding presence at first level. And we have one right now. Okay, we'll get more later. <laughs> all right, now let's go back to the um, the choices around um, the team power. I'll go through the team powers. It looks like people have already started choosing. But um, hashtag pick a team power. Let me read them out. Here we go. Um, autocratic. If an ally suffers a critical hit from a creature, you can use your reaction to give another ally a single attack against the creature that inflicted the critical hit. Okay, all right. Big picture. As an action, select one ally able to see and hear you. If the ally hits with the, an attack before the beginning of your next turn, that hit gains a damage bonus equal to your wisdom modifier plus your level. That's pretty good. Boar's head. Spend 10 feet of movement to give an ally 5 foot bonus to her speed until the beginning of the next turn. You can use boar's head multiple times on your turn, but each ally cannot gain more than 5 feet of movement this way. Okay, so... So spend ten feet of movement. Okay, so I see what you. I see what it is. So you, your resource is your own movement. Okay, cool. Next, um, control the battle theater. Uh, when rolling initiative, you and each ally that you can see or hear gain a plus two bonus to their roll. Holy Toledo! Are you kidding me? Control the battle theater is really strong. Pl being able to get a bonus to your. I mean, it's not a plus five. Plus two is. A little smaller but it's still pretty powerful anyway um, face slap use an action to wake up an adjacent unconscious creature if the um, target was unconscious from being reduced to fewer than zero hit points she is healed by one hit point really <laughs> when you use this feature you cannot use it again until you finish a long rest that is funny I'm just gonna go around if you drop down to zero hit points and you're not dead path slap you wake up come on get in the fight <laughs> <laughs> uh, focus target that can't be used you have to be level 5 so we'll move on um, improvis improvi improvisation is the best plan use a bonus action to gain one additional reaction before the beginning of your next turn god I don't think that, is that ever going to come up mark of the puppeteer anytime an ally hits with an attack you use a reaction to shove an that creature 5 feet as long as the target is not moving into hazardous terrain like fire or a pit okay I don't know how useful that's going to be uh, that's no one hits the chief is a level five so you can't have that pat on the back when the party takes a short rest you can award any of your hit dice to an ally oh allies cannot have more hit dice than their level right okay plan of attack you can spend 10 feet of movement to move another ally five feet this movement does not provoke attacks of opportunity and does not require a, a reaction on the allies part okay interesting pure leader 
If you hit an enemy with a ranged attack, you can inflict no you can inflict no damage. One ally can disengage from the same enemy and move up to half their speed. It's very situational. Quick patch. You can use your action to administer aid to an ally. The target regains a number of hit points equal to 1d6. Oh, your level. So a number of six-sided dice equal to your level. So if you're level one, you're going to get one six-sided dice. But if you are level five, you get five six-sided dice. When you use this feature, you cannot use it again until you finish a short or a long rest. Are you shitting me? No, you're not, are you? Oh, you're not shitting me, Chris. Okay. <laughs> that's pretty good. That's that's pretty, pretty useful. Uh, a short rest mechanic, basically. It's going to get used as long as your game master lets you have short rests. You can select this... Um, trait multiple times increasing the damage cured by 1d6 each time and gain an additional use of quick patch between long rests maximum of three i see okay all right next one reading body language you have advantage on wisdom insight wisdom survival charisma deception charisma uh, intimidation charisma performance or or charisma persuasion checks select one you can select this trait multiple times, select, selecting a different skill each time. So you pick basically a skill to have advantage on. Read body language. Seems like a pretty good choice. <laughs> it really does. Okay, moving down. So this is this is yeah, this is a picture. Um, snap it, snap out of it. If an ally within five feet of you is charmed, frightened, or stunned, you can use a reaction to inflict one d4 damage. On that ally and remove the effect okay unnecessary abuse is level five so we're not going to be using that so those are your choices we need a team power team power time what is it going to be what have you chosen um control battle theater quick patch beats pat on the back I, okay fair enough uh so look i think what we'll do is quick patch and Control Battle Theatre are a tie, okay? Because there's only two of you voting right now. So what we'll do is I will roll. One to three is Control Battle Theatre and four to six is the Quick Patch. It's Control Battle Theatre. Control Battle Theatre has won the day, okay? Can we get one of these for now? We just need to put it in. Uh, team presence. Deal with that later. Um, team power. Team presence. Where is the battlefield? Control battlefield. Field theater. Why can't I get this? Oh, it won't let me um, highlight that one. Just these. This. But okay. So let's just get the mechanics, and then I'll I'll type in the rest of it by hand. Copy. And plug it in here. Control Battle Theatre. Theatre. Okay. I think I got it. Alright, so there's our mechanic. Now, Team Presence was also listed. What is Team Presence? And where did it, how did I miss it? Is it something that was there? They've just got it listed as Team Powers for the good of the team. Oh, no, no, no. It's just a mistake on my part. I see. I see. I've put it in team presence when it's actually commanding presence, team powers, and for the good of the team, which we've got all there. Everything is there. Okay, we've done that. Sweet. Very good. Very good. Oh, you were outvoted by a dice. <laughs> it happens. How, how were you outvoted? Control battle theater is what you selected. You selected Control Battle Battle Theater. It's it's in. I rolled the dice, and that's the one that came up because I rolled low. Did I mean? So I don't know how you could be out. You weren't outvoted. Oh, Carell. Oh, Patch. Oh, we're going to the Patch now. All right. Okay. See, I see what you're saying. Drink of water. Hello. How are you, Carell? How are you? Let's do that. And toss that away. 
and I have to readjust my <laughs> okay all right so let's take that one out and instead it is the patch the quick patch all right quick patch where are you uh, quick patch here it is We just need this bit here, and that will do, and I'll drop it in, and here, paste. Right, I'm not going to worry about sorting it all out because I just can't be bothered. Um, I'm just going to leave it like that. <laughs> I'm going to move on because we got to we got to buy some stuff, don't we? Don't we have to get some gear? I'm pretty sure we're going to buy two small arms. We're going to buy a set of armor with um, 300. Uh, we're going to get some some gear. So like. There's a few things to be sorted. So uh, we have 400 here. So we've got 400 in cash, ready to go if we need to. And yeah, all right. And we can put in our initiative. It's a plus five. Deal with armor class later. I'll deal with the numbers later. Let's just start making some purchases, shall we? So gear is on 116. And we'll have to shrink this down a little bit so I can actually see stuff because right now I can't see Dilly Squat. Here we go, here's our gear. So let's start off with um, buying some stuff. <laughs> uh, what two small arms? Arms do you want so your limit is 300 for each okay a saber dagger pistol good lord do we have a saber dagger pistol let's let's just have a look here i don't know do we have it here single arms small arms one-handed so the choices here are you could have the air dart pistol you could have the break action shotgun pistol you could have the capsicum and spray. Um, you could have a grappling hook. You could have a high caliber auto loader. You could have the low caliber auto loader. You could have the machine pistol. You can have the one handed grenade launcher. Good lord. You can have a pocket pistol. You can have a revolver at 150. Um, and you've said the saber dagger pistol. I don't. I'm not quite aware of that one. The elephant cartridges, Willoughby. So, <laughs> all right. So that's so that's that's the single arm firepower stuff. This is the two handed small arms. So you have the assault rifle if you want an assault rifle, a basic sniper rifle. You can have one of those. Um, you can have a bolt. You can have a bolt rifle if you want. Uh, you could have a grappling hook. You could have a grenade light weapon. I'm not sure what that's all about, but I, I guess it's something. It's a special. Um, you can have the shotgun. You can have a submachine gun. You can have a semi-automatic rifle. Uh, what else have you got here? So that's pretty much it. So what have you guys chosen? High caliber auto loader. The high caliber auto loader, saber or um, dagger, pistol, or a grenade launcher. Grenade launcher. Okay. All right. Well, I can. I can. I know. I know you guys are very partial to the grenade launcher. Grenade launcher light weapon. So we can take that. That's fine. So we need two weapons though. There's not going to be just one. There's going to be two. So we've got that one, and I'll put this in the gear. And we got paste. Okay, so that's you got a grenade launcher, and then you you just you want a disruptor. I don't even think we can afford the disruptor right now. Where did, where did you get the disruptor from? Because you get small arms. You get two small arms to pick from, and SMG small. Missile grenade. <laughs> Submachine gun. Okay, submachine gun. Right, that's fine. We can do that. I can do that. Uh, 
Why am I so having so much difficulty finding it? Here you go, submachine gun. Here we go, submachine gun. One D six. Paste. And damage is one D six. One D six. Uh, damage for the the grenade launcher light is special. Okay, and uh, deal with that in a second. Uh, we'll be adding our dex modifier to our damage. So I'll do the damage for that now. So it's dex, so it's five. Um, out to hit is proficiency is a plus two, just as you would expect. Plus two. So to hit with machine gun, it's going to be five dex modifier and the proficiency bonus is plus two, so it's a plus seven. Plus seven, which is very high for level one. And the grenade launcher is the same. Same formula. Okay, right, that that dealt with that little bit. Are we happy? I hope so. Okay, let's go over to have a look at armor. New weapons. Um, no, 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 we need armor. And I'm pretty sure our armor options are light and medium. And we get to spend 300 on our light or medium armor. We do have, I'm going to say it right now, we do have 400 in the kitty. So if you wanted to use that, you probably could. Um, this is ammunition. We'll worry about that later on. Later, later. That's melee weapons. Uh, and you can, if you want a melee weapon, you can. Brass knuckles, collapsible baton, fighting um, knife bayonet, a plug uh, bayonet if you wanted. I mean... Yeah, you got some cash if you wanted that sort of thing. Steal the disruptor. We're not stealing nothing right now. Use the disruptor for the game for the getaway. <laughs> white, white phosphorus grenades. You guys really have a thing for the white phosphorus grenades. You like to be able to light things up, don't you? All right. So, lo <laughs> white phosphorus grenades. White phosphorus. They are expensive. The, the 150, so you can have white phosphorus. You can have one. You can have one. You can have one of those. It's 2d8, but white phosphorus is a possibility. Grenade. We'll give you a... We'll give you a do you want one or do you want two? One or two? What's it going to be? White phosphorus grenade. Um, and it is 2d8 damage. My advice to you is to go buy some grenades for your stuff that, and like those concussion grenades are only $10. $10. So $10 for those, and they do 2D6 um, damage. So it's actually pretty good, really, when you think about it. You tell me. Let's have a plasma sword. We, we, we're not going to get a plasma sword yet, just yet. John Wick, a John Wick suit. <laughs> what a John Wick suit. Let's, let's go and have a look at the armor. Blum, 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 blum. Ch -ch -ch -ch. Here we go. So armor. Light and medium are your options. You have a maximum of 300 to spend, or you can use some of the 400 that you have already accumulated as part of your gear. So it could be leather textile. You could have ballistic armor. You could have synthetic weave. Um, you could potentially buy the more advanced armor, which is synthetic weave MK2. I don't know why you would bother. It's a little bit lighter, but I don't know that it's much point. It's a bit higher tech level, but really it's not doing very much more. Medium armor, you have the force body vest at 50. You could have that. You could have the armored combat suit. That's 200. You could afford that. You can The armored survival suit is 300. You can afford that. That's 15 plus your dex modifier. I know it does max out at two, so you kind of have to do the maths and decide which one is likely to be the most beneficial, you know, but it's up to you. You decide. Select some armor. Eight of the normal grenades, concussion. Got it. Hashtag. Uh, select armor. Okay. Armored survival suit. Fine. Armored survival suit it is. 
copy, copy, copy. Um, a survival suit it is. We will put that into there. Paste. Sweet, that's done. Next, um, armored survival suit. We'll do the mass on that right now. It's a 15, and your dex is going to be higher than that, and you have disadvantage. So, um, 15 and 2 is 17 for your armor class. And that's good. All right, you've got zero inspiration right now because you haven't played the game yet. Um, let's do all the maths for this so I can do that now so wisdom perception we'll deal with this okay let's fill in all our maths okay dex acrobatics is plus five more dexes where are you where are you dex 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 further down survive stealth plus five sleight of hand plus five because of that high dex. I think that's all of the dex skills. I believe so. Yes, next one. Wisdom. Wisdom is a plus two. Plus two. Uh, wisdom, 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 wisdom. Plus two for insight. Uh, wisdom, medicine, plus two. Perception is plus two, but you're also proficient, so that's going to be plus four total because proficiency is two and your wisdom modifier is two so that's four uh, survival you're proficient and we get wisdom modifier of two so that's another plus four there wisdom 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 yes got it all done next one intelligence intelligence is a plus three so we get a plus three here uh, another intelligence use computer and you're proficient so plus three and the proficiency bonus of plus two is a five Okay, you're about to do that pretty well demolitions. You don't have demolitions, so it's just going to be a plus uh, Three for blowing stuff up Engineering is also a plus three so is history plus three um, investigation you are proficient and you get the plus three from your intelligence so that's a plus five light armor 10 10 grenades you reckon this is synthetic light armor okay I'm coming back to it give me a second I'll, I'll make those adjustments you want 10 grenades <laughs> um, I'm just gonna finish doing the maths because otherwise I'm gonna I'm gonna get lost um, plus three for our nature, not proficient. Um, religion is plus three for intelligence, so it's got science, it's going to be plus three, but we're not proficient. Okay, it's done all of them. So next is the strength, so that's minus one for athletics. Uh, and then I don't think strength comes up again. I think that's the only strength skill. There's only one of them. Deception. Uh, so deception is going to be a plus four. We're not proficient in it though. Um, intimidation is a plus four, which is high. <laughs> uh, performance is a plus four. Persuasion though is different. It's plus four for our pers um, persuasion modifier. And our proficiency is two, so it's a six for that one. Gonna be good at doing that. You just won't be able to say very much. And then our perception plus ten. So perception is four plus ten is fourteen for passive perception. Fourteen. Okay, have I have I logged in all of the the relatively important pieces of information? Um, and we're gonna go NA for that. I'm not gonna do ladders. It's not gonna have I'm not gonna have time. It's going to be too hard. Uh, so we've got that, we've got that, we've got that. And I just need to do the grenades, don't I? And we need to change up the suit. The synthetic armor. Is that what we're after now? Okay. All right. So we've done most of the maths. Oh, I need to do the um, the saving throw. Sorry, people. So minus one for our strength saving throw. Our dex saving throw is going to be a plus five, just the modifier. Con modifier is going to be a plus one. Our intelligence modifier is proficient, so that's plus two, and the intelligence is three, which is five. 
Wisdom is just two, it's not proficient. And Charisma is high, so that's a four plus it's proficient, it's going to be a six. Okay, all right. That's got all that in. Nice. Pretty happy with that. Okay, so I need to just change out the armor. And you guys were looking at synthetic weave. You sure you don't want the ballistic weave? Because that's a plus, that's a 12 plus your dex modifier. It is heavier, for sure. Light armor, 10 grenades, persuasion, point of a person, point at a task. Yeah, you can, you're going to be good at it. Synthetic armor. Synthetic, synthetic weave. Okay. Your armor class will go down. It won't be a 17. It will wind up being a little bit less. Fifteen pounds is not that much. I'll just give you the ballistic armor. Just give you the ballistic armor. How's that? Then you got no disadvantage. Yep. No disadvantage. You can sneak around if you really want to. And paste. Ballistic armor. Twelve plus the five for dex comes out at seventeen. So your armor class is exactly the same. And we just need some grenades. 10 concussion grenades. Concussions. Where's our concussions? And they are D6s, aren't they? D6s. And there's. You want 10 of them, so that's yes. Okay. So that's uh, 2. 150 left. 10. Concussion grenades. Concussion grenades. And then you got some money for ammunition and whatever else you want. Um, but yeah, we've. Uh, I think we have just about locked it down. Do you guys want to pick a origin? We can do the origins if you want. I mean, I I, I do the origins only occasionally. It's it's sort of like a. We can do them. We we don't have to do them. We can. We can't. You know. It's like I don't. I don't really have too much lined up on that i'm not too too attached to the origins but if you want to do an origin we can and i believe the origins are part of um the end of this here we go origins so you would roll a 20 sided dice and then you pick and we pick from one of these categories so parenting status um can be casualty could be sibling rivalry, sibling viewpoint, separation, surrogate. Uh, could be siblings, life ex episodes, tragedy, tragedy, uh, windfall. It could be um, enemies. It could be friendship. The cause, who does what, what can we throw, what can be thrown, um, who ticked off who. Romance, relationship, uh, can be previous relationship, feelings, issues, uh, or misfortune. So there is the option to, to roll 20 sided dice and pick one of those if you want to. Uh, abandoned fourth son of a noble who tossed her. <laughs> okay. uh, so what, what Fred is doing is he's just he's just making something up. Which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. We can do that. That's fine. So let's let's just, just pour that over. That's fine. We'll do that. Okay. So we're just about sorted, which is I'm quite happy about. I tell you, this is not like making a Shadow Dark character. Making a Ultra Modern 5 character, you cannot say that it is lightweight in terms of the work you have to do. There's quite a bit going on. Okay. <laughs> There's definitely an awful lot of decisions to be made. It, it, and, and yet it's almost identical to D&D &D 5e. So it, when you do it and it's not fantasy and not D&D &D 5e and it's ultra modern, 5, ultra modern 5 or ultra modern 5e, you start to realize just how much work there is in creating a character. Oh my lordies, is there a bit? There's a rather a lot, for sure. <laughs> I'm going to say it now. Now we could buy more stuff, but... I'm spent. I'm ready to. I'm ready to bugger off. <laughs> what are we doing next week? 
What what ultra modern five character are we building next week? We're doing, we are doing it. We're doing one of my favourite classes to play, is the monk. But Chris does not think that calling it monk, the warrior monk, a, a thing. It's martial artist. Yeah, martial artist. What are you? You're going to do the karate chop? Are you going to punch him? Are you going to use your elbows? Are you going to use your knees? Are you going to use your head? Uh, I don't know. You tell me. Whatever it is going to be. <laughs> Maybe you're going to just knock them around with your backside. I couldn't care less. Kick them in the head. So it's the martial artist we'll do next week. But we've today we've done uh, and finished it. We've done the martial, which I think is an achievement, frankly. <laughs> I'm I'm quite impressed. We got through all of it. <laughs> so let's finish up this uh, this end this poll and see what we got here in the polls. And here we go. Have you made a martial character with Ultra Modern Five? No, sixty six percent, and I'm not surprised. Okay, I'm not expecting you to have done this before. Just watching, twenty five percent. Interesting. Yes, eight percent out of twelve votes. So somebody has actually made a martial character for Ultra Modern Five here. That's cool. I'm very happy. I know that's a tiny fraction, but you know how you know how as you're playing a game, whether you're a player or a game master or a dungeon master, and you say, I would really like to play a different game. How about we go and play something else? And they say, I don't want to learn a different system to 5e. I just want to keep playing 5e. I don't want to go and figure out all this other stuff. And you say, but, but you could, we could still use 5e, but it's modern, and it's sci-fi, and there are completely new classes, and completely new backgrounds, and completely new races or species. They're called births. And there's a ladder system. Yes, there are feats as well. You could do this. We could play in a fantasy world, yes, but we could. what about doing a science fiction one using 5e? You can do it now. Okay, so if you're struggling to get your players to shift to doing something else because they're so attached to 5e, you can do it. It's possible. I keep going on about this. There are so many different ways to make it happen nowadays. <laughs> and uh, yes, you can make that happen. You are poss It's possible to have, have somebody play something other than 5e fantasy. Anyway, <laughs> thank you to everybody who's been here watching and listening. Thank you to everybody who took part in the poll. I do appreciate you. I want to thank my patrons who support me every week so I can keep running this program where we build characters for different game systems, whatever that might be. And right now, Ultra Modern 5 is ruling the roost. Don't worry, it won't stay there forever, but we're going to be there for a couple of months at least. So we've still got quite a few classes to get through. Martial artist, martial artist is going to be next week. I'm looking forward to that. So thank you to Pale Rider, Fred Huber, Cal Rell. I do appreciate you being here. Makes a big difference when people are actually able to give me feedback, roll dice. Diago, without you rolling dice, without you making decisions, it would just be me sitting here making all the choices and building the character, which is frankly boring. Okay? boring. So wherever you are in the world, whether it be the morning, the afternoon or the night, please look after yourself, your family and your friends. Be nice to your neighbours and hey, till next time, why not try Ultra Modern 5 or keep rolling those 20s.